The Middle East Institute at Georgia State University presents Arabic Grammar Unpacked. In this lesson, we will be discussing verbs whose middle letter is the letter wow. These are called hollow wow verbs. We've already discussed other types of irregular verbs. Those whose first letter is the letter wow are called assimilated verbs. Those whose middle letter is a vowel are called hollow verbs. Those whose final letter is a vowel are called defective verbs. Those whose second and third root letters are the same are called doubled verbs. And those whose first or really any letter is hamza are called hamzated verbs. Today, we will be dealing with hollow verbs, specifically those whose middle letter is the letter wow. If you've gone through any part of Al-Kitab, you've already discovered the most important verb in this group, which is the verb kana, to be. Maha says of her cousin Khalid, kana fi saf he was in the fourth grade, wa kuntu fi saf al and I was in the first grade. Now, unlike regular verbs, these change stems in the past tense. The he stem is kana, and the ana stem is kun. And the verb kala, to say, behaves in exactly the same way. We can say, qalat li innaha la turid al baqa fi baladiha. She said to me that she does not want to remain in her country. Qultu laha inna al muhajara qararun kabir. I said to her that immigration was a big decision. Again, we have the same pattern. In the third person, the middle letter is alif. In the first and second persons, the middle letter disappears and becomes dhamma instead. And this is characteristic of hollow verbs. The pattern isn't really all that difficult to learn because it's actually rather logical. Let's take the verb qala as our example verb, to say. For I said, we say ana koltu, our middle letter wow becomes the short vowel dhamma. And the reason that this happens is because the suffix begins with sukun. We say ana koltu, not ana kawaltu, like the regular verb pattern ought to be. In the anta and anti forms, the same thing happens because the suffix begins with sukun. We say kulta and kulti. But in the hua form, because the suffix is just fatha, we don't begin with sukun. We say kala, the middle letter wow becomes alif. Alif can never be a root letter of any word, but in this case, the middle root letter wow transforms into alif. And for hiya, again, because we don't begin with sukun, we begin with fatha, we say kalat, she said. So this pattern of having two separate stems, one for when the suffix begins with sukun and one for when the suffix does not, is very characteristic of hollow verbs. For the antuma form, you two people, we say koltuma because the suffix begins with sukun. For the dual he form, those two people, we say kala because the suffix does not begin with sukun. Same thing for those two women, kalata. But for nahnu, our suffix begins with sukun, so we say kulna. For antum, kultum. For the little used y'all ladies form, kultuna. But hum, we have kalu, because our suffix does not begin with sukun. For the hunna form, we say kulna. So we have two separate stems, one for when the suffix begins with sukun, where we have the long vowel wow becoming the short vowel dhamma, and one for when the suffix does not begin with sukun, when we have the long vowel wow becoming alif. And this is characteristic of all hollow verbs. If you can learn this pattern, all other hollow wow verbs will behave in exactly the same way. In the present tense, hollow verbs are almost entirely regular, with one significant exception we'll get to in a moment. I can say, ذَلَكَ shab يَكُونُ طَالِبًا jayid. That guy is a good student. Now, normally you're used to the is or the am or the are being left out of the sentence. And in fact, very few native speakers would ever say a sentence like this. But it's not ungrammatical. There's nothing wrong with using the present tense of kana in a sentence. It's just that people typically don't do it. Where you'll often see it is in the muldorit mansub, after the conjunction en, after a verb like want or like. I can say, uridu an akuna ahsan talibin fisaf. I want that I be the best student in the class, or I want to be the best student in the class. And this is really quite common in the most likely place. You'll see the present tense of kana. I can use the verb kala in the present tense, and people do all the time. Limada la takulina aishe abedan. We know that we're talking to a woman here because of the suffix, and what we get is the long vowel wow as a long vowel wow, making it a regular verb in the present tense. 
I can say len yakulu aishe li ahad. They won't say anything to anyone, and it will work in the same way. Let's look at the present tense conjugation of kala. Here we are in the muldarat marful, the most common version of the present tense. We say ana akul. We have the long vowel wow, the root letter of the verb, in the present tense conjugation, and this is pretty characteristic of these verbs. Anta takul, anti takulin, and so forth. They're simply regular. We have the long vowel wow as our middle letter in all of them until we get to the very rarely used all female forms. For antunna, y'all ladies, we don't say takulna, but rather takulna. And the reason is, as you can probably guess by now, because the suffix begins with sukun. And so here, the long vowel wow disappears and becomes domma. For regular, ordinary Arabic speaking, this won't make any difference at all because these forms aren't used in the spoken language. And in fact, they're only rarely used in the written language. But this is the slight irregularity of the hollow verb in the present tense that a really, really advanced student should know. Most of you can probably get away without knowing this, and it will be okay. For whom we say yakuluna, it's a regular verb, and for the those ladies form, again, because the suffix begins with sukun, our long vowel wow disappears and becomes a dhamma, and we say yakulna. Again, this is very little used in the regular language. In the mudarat mansub, the second version of the present tense, the verb is going to behave exactly the same way that we're used to it doing. Akula, takula, takuli, it loses its noon, yakul, takul. The dual forms lose their noons, the nahnu form is regular, the antum form loses its noon, the y'all ladies form, again because the suffix begins with sukun, is going to change the long vowel wow into a dhamma. This is very little used in modern Arabic. The home form is regular, it loses its noon, and again the hunna form, the those ladies form, begins with sukun. So it's going to behave a little bit differently. But this isn't something that most intermediate students really need to focus on. It's simply here for the sake of completeness. Now, when we use the particle lem, when we negate the past tense by using lem, we're going to put the verb in the muldaret majzum, the third form of the present tense. And this is where things are going to get a bit tricky. Again, because of the presence of sukun, strange things are going to happen. So if we say he did not say, we don't say lem yakul, but rather lem yakul. And the reason is because the suffix begins with sukun. The long vowel wow becomes a dhamma. This is endlessly frustrating for intermediate students because you're used to the verbs that you know behaving fairly regularly. And then here you have a verb that for the most part behaves pretty predictably. But then once you get into the mudarit majzum, what's going to happen is that the middle letter of the verb is going to disappear. And most of the texts you'll be reading will be unvoweled texts. So it won't be immediately clear what happened to that third root letter. Again, the key here, as with all irregular verbs, is to know the most commonly used vocabulary words in that particular group, and then you won't have too many problems. So if I say, I was not, I can say, ma kuntu, or I can say, lem ekun, not lem akun, but lem ekun, again, because my suffix has a sukun on it. However, if I say, you did not say to a woman, I don't say lem takuli, but rather lem takuli, because the suffix does not have sukun. It has a long vowel suffix instead. And for that reason, the wow gets to stay a wow instead of becoming a dhamma. Again, this is very frustrating for intermediate students to pick up, because like a lot of things about Arabic, it's hideously unnaturally complicated. And this is a big reason why students have a hard time picking up on intermediate Arabic, and a big reason why I've made these videos for you. For they did not say, again, because we have a long vowel suffix, the wow does not change to a dhamma. We have yakulu. So let's understand this rule. This is called the long vowel in the jussive rule and is probably the single most frustrating thing about intermediate Arabic. So let's learn it the right way so that we can all understand it. There's an if-then statement here. If the verb has a vowel as a root letter, so the irregular verbs like vehaba or darasa are not going to apply here. But verbs like hollow verbs, where one of the root letters is a vowel, this rule is going to apply. And it's in the muldarat majzum, or present jussive, the word used in English to describe the majzum, that is, after lem, or in a command, then the long vowel becomes the corresponding short vowel. So the wow in yakul becomes the dhamma, yakul. 
unless the verb has a long vowel suffix. This is probably a screen you'll want to print out because this rule really does take kind of a long time to get used to. And the more you can focus on it and just get it out of the way and understand how it works clearly, the easier time you'll have learning these verbs and actually learning to use them, which will make speaking the language a lot more fun. So let's take a few examples of this rule in action before we look at the conjugation table. We can say, لماذا لم تكن في الصف يا محمد? Why weren't you in class, Muhammad? Here we have the mudarat majzum after lem. We have a verb whose middle letter is a vowel. So that long vowel becomes the corresponding short vowel. Wow becomes dhamma because we do not have a long vowel suffix. So we say takun rather than takun. But if we're talking to Amira in the exact same way, Amira is a woman, so she gets the long e suffix on her. So we say, لِمَاذَ لَمْ تَكُونِ فِصَفْ يَا أَمِيرَ We get to keep our long vowel because we have a long vowel suffix. So the wow stays wow instead of becoming dhamma. I can say, لَمْ يَقُلْ شَيْئًا عَنْ ذَلَكَ الْمَوْضُوعَ He did not say anything about that subject. Here, after lem, we're in the mudarit majzum. We have a verb whose middle letter is a vowel. So that middle letter becomes dhamma instead of wow because we do not have a long vowel suffix. But if we're talking about they, I have to say lam yakulu shay'an an dalak al modul. They did not say anything about that subject. Because we have a long vowel suffix, wow and silent alif, the wow in yakulu stays wow instead of becoming a dhamma. Like I said, this is endlessly frustrating for intermediate students, so if you can really focus on the rule and get used to it, you can save yourself a great deal of time and frustration later on, though it is extremely tedious and baroquely complicated, frankly. Let's take a look at the conjugation table for the Muldarit Majzum, and this is where things will really get different. We say, Ana akul, not Ana akul, because we have a long vowel in our verb, and we're in the Muldarit Majzum, and we don't have a long vowel suffix. Anta takul, but anti takuli, we get to keep our long vowel because of the suffix. Hua yakul, he takul. The dual forms all get to keep their long vowel because they all have a long vowel as their suffix, the alif after the lem here. It's become the lem alif character. Nahnu nakul, antum takulu, because we have a long vowel suffix, we get to keep our long vowel. But here, for the y'all ladies form, our suffix begins with sukun, so the wow becomes a dhamma. Same thing for hum and hunna. Hum gets to keep its long vowel, hunna does not. And again, it's all based on whether there's a suffix at the end of the verb, a suffix with a long vowel at the end of the verb, that is. So remember that this particular rule only applies in the muldarit majzum, the jussive or third form of the present tense. In the first and second form of the present tense, it really doesn't apply at all. And this can be endlessly frustrating for intermediate students. Best to focus on it now, get it out of the way. We can take a look at commands, which are always in the muldarit majzum. I can say, لا تكون طالبا كسولا يا محمد. Don't be a lazy student, Muhammad. In this case, the verb kana has a vowel as one of its root letters, and we're in the muldarit majzum, and we don't have a long vowel suffix, so the wow becomes a dhamma, la takun, don't be. Bel kun taliban mujtahid. Remember, to form the affirmative command, we take the ta off the negative command, and then we add back a helping vowel if we need to, which we don't here because the first consonant doesn't have sukun over it because our long vowel has helpfully become a short vowel. So the command for B is kun. But if I'm talking to Amira in exactly the same way, Amira gets long vowel suffixes because she's a woman. So I say, La takuni talibetan kasuldetan ya Amira. Don't be a lazy student, Amira. In this case, because we have kept our long vowel suffix, we get to keep our long vowel in the middle of the verb as well. It doesn't become a dhamma. It stays wow. Balkuni talibetan mushtahida. So be a good student. Because she has her long vowel suffix, the rule doesn't apply, and the long vowel in the middle of the verb gets to stay a long vowel into, instead of becoming a dhamma. This is a little bit complicated, but the pattern is pretty easy to learn once you get used to it, especially once you start to learn the most commonly used vocabulary words in this particular genre of verbs.